Out of the impenetrable mist of the indecipherable deep past, two fundamental forms of life appear to us. These are the two most fundamental categories of life that are yet known, the eubacteria and the archaea. Later on in history, a new cell type is going to break off the branch of archaea, and the eukaryota, or the eukaryotes, are going to begin. And it's off of this branch of eukaryotes that all organisms made up of more than one cell, including us, would eventually be made. But at the point of the origin of life, which is what we're concerned with, life was very unlike the very complicated eukaryotes, and even unlike the somewhat mature eubacteria and archaea that emerge out of the fog of the unknown depths of history. This video is going to consider, at the latest, life from 3.4 billion years ago. So we don't need to consider any other life form than these eubacteria and these archaea, because the earliest estimates for the introduction of the eukaryote aren't until about 1.9 billion years ago, and possibly significantly later. So these two life forms that form our current bottom categories of life, the eubacteria and the archaea, what are they? They're all prokaryotes, which means that they're all relatively simple single-celled organisms that are doing life. Now they differ in a bunch of ways from each other, but we're not going to explore that here. What's important to us is that in this discussion of the oldest fossil, we're not looking for bones or teeth or shells or anything of that sort, but rather we're looking for much more minute kind of things. We're looking for possible traces of fairly basic single-celled life forms. With that in mind, let's begin. Let's start with the oldest claimed fossil. As we'll see soon, it's possible that there's a fossil older than this, but because of the ambiguity of the actual origin date of that fossil, I decided to place it second, and I'll explain that when we get to it. So we're now turning to the earliest claim for life, and it comes from a time in the deep past, 4.1 billion years ago. And right now, we only have either very few rocks or no rocks from that time period. And the form of this evidence doesn't come like evidence for past life normally comes in the form of fossils and rocks. Rather, the only form in which we have this material from this time period is from tiny crystals of the mineral zircon that have been weathered away from their host rocks as tiny grains. And because zircon is an incredibly sturdy mineral, it remains in its original form and eventually becomes part of a new rock, this time forming with tons of other grains and detritus as sediments on the floor of some body of water. This new sedimentary rock may eventually be weathered as well, and this zircon crystal will still survive that weathering again and find itself in a new rock. And a single zircon crystal can go through this process several times before we find it now. These specific zircons that we're talking about are coming from the Jack Hills region of Australia. The zircons are part of a rock that's dated to about three and a half billion years ago, but the zircon itself is from 4.1 billion years ago. Some zircons are older than this one zircon that we're going to be talking about, going back as far as 4.4 billion years ago. And we know the ages of these crystals through measuring the radioactive uranium to the daughter lead product. Uranium-238 decays to lead-206 with a half-life of 4.5 billion years. So we measure the proportions of each of these, of these parent and daughter isotopes. And that gives us an age of 4.1 billion years for this zircon in particular, and up to 4.4 for some of the other zircons. So we have a zircon, but what can we do with it? Well, what this means is that we have locked inside this zircon material that comes from a time period from which we have no rocks, and older than any other known fossil. Again, both arguably, as we'll see in the next claim. And specifically, if we can find inside one of these zircons carbon, we can then ask whether that carbon came from a living source. But just having carbon isn't enough, of course. Instead, what we're looking for is a special distribution of the different carbon isotopes. Carbon comes in two stable forms, carbon-12, that's carbon with six protons and six neutrons, and carbon-13, that's carbon with six protons and seven neutrons. Carbon-13 is slightly heavier than carbon-12 and is selected against in photosynthetic creatures, such as many microbes. And what this means is that the natural distribution of carbon-12 to carbon-13, which here at Earth's crust is 99 carbon-12, to one carbon-13, that ratio is slightly skewed in a lot of life forms. Specifically, we find that there's about 2% less carbon-13 than there normally is in photosynthetic life forms. And this difference is maintained once the organism dies. This irregular distribution of carbon isotopes, this slightly increased ratio of carbon-12, was found in this zircon from 4.1 billion years ago. However, 
there are a couple of known ways that non-biological sources do a similar kind of selecting for carbon-12, and much of the argument about whether or not this particular zircon is evidence of life revolves around that issue, just how strong of an evidence for life is carbon-12 in this specific zircon. Now let's move to the second fossil. The second fossil comes from as recent as 3.77 billion years ago, but it might come from as early as 4.28 billion years ago. There's a debate about the age of these rocks. So they're either very close to the oldest claimed fossil that we have, or actually the oldest claimed fossil that we have. And they come from the New Vegetic Greenstone Belt in Labrador, Canada. Here's one of the images that they show. You're seeing metal rods, and these rods are argued to have originated near a hydrothermal vent system, one of those hot vent systems on the ocean floor. And the scientists who discovered these argue that their life, by pointing to how similar they are to certain modern types of life that live in the same environment, that form these filamentary and tubular structures. And some even have specific features, such as this one that ends with a knob, that are similar to existing life. Furthermore, the scientists who did this research conducted isotopic studies on some of the carbon that was immediately adjacent to the alleged fossils, and they found that it was depleted in carbon-13. So again, we have that sign, that increase in carbon-12, indicating life. However, these findings have been criticized with some scientists saying that we really don't need biological origins for these kinds of structures and talking about how these structures are naturally formed in such environments. The third fossil comes in the forms of stromatolites from Greenland, and a lot of the oldest fossils that we have are stromatolites. The Isua belt in Greenland, where they come from, contains some of the oldest rock formations of Earth, and a strange pattern was seen in some of these rocks. Take a look. You see those curves and also those layers to these curved structures, if they are structures? Those curves and layers are thought to be the oldest fossils of stromatolites. Here's one example of what stromatolites currently look like, and you can see they're mounds of material, and what they are is sediment and some alive microbes. They get built up as sun-loving microbes lie in shallow water taking in the sun. But then sediment lands on top of these microbes, and some of the microbes make their way up to the top to get better access to the sunlight. And other microbes either die or languish below. And this happens again and again and again. The sediment then covers that second layer of microbes, and on and on and on it goes. Across time, fairly large structures are built. And if you look at some more recent fossils of stromatolites, you can clearly see the similarities to this alleged fossil stromatolite, at least broadly. But are the differences we're seeing just the effects of a long amount of time and whatever's gone on in the duration to these rocks? Or are the differences between these two because we're not looking at stromatolites at all? This ambiguity leaves some scientists skeptical. So we move on to one of the next oldest claimed fossils, the microbes of the apex shirt. As we hit the fourth fossil, we're finally looking at something that readily looks pretty much like a form of life that's all around us. Similar small groups of microbes have been found in fossil form and look very similar. You can see the little creatures pretty clearly, but even so, some scientists, led by Martin Brazer, are of the mind that these shapes are the products of minerals forming near hydrothermal vents, and that if you look closely, they're actually quite distinct from the known fossil microbes that they've been compared to. Just four years ago, however, Schopp comes back and he shows that these so-called microbes are isotopically light containing that alluring extra amount of carbon-12. However, given the sufficient controversy around this fossil, we're going to have to move past it and we're going to move to the oldest widely accepted fossils of life, other than some slightly older stromatolites. Welcome the Strelly Pool fossils. The Strelly Pool fossils were only reported on in 2015 for the first time, and they contain numerous species of early life. The clarity and similarities to some forms of modern life that these fossils have make them the oldest things, other than stromatolites of a slightly older age, to be accepted as real fossils without much debate. They show a biological world that is already varied and somewhat mature. It thus indicates that life had been going strong for a while beforehand. The exact numbers of how much time life had to have been evolving beforehand to have this kind of life at this point 3.4 billion years ago, and therefore the time given for the origin of life, is debated as well. But the general number that's given in textbooks and repeated in most lectures is 3.7 billion years ago. However, depending on exactly what fossil you find persuasive and the amount of time that you give for life to have evolved to get to the stage reflected in the fossil, that should give you some sense of when the origin of life was. If my spidey sense is right, that date in textbooks and Google of 3.7 billion years ago, expect that number to be pushed back.
and expect that the bias of the next generation of researchers tilts toward an earlier origin, prior to even 4 billion years ago. Like the video, subscribe with Big Histories for you, and support my efforts on Liberape or PayPal, links in the description.